Hello and welcome to Lancashire Scotland session on how STEM is used in Scotland's land-based agriculture and environmental conservation sector. My name is Annabelle and I'm the project coordinator at Lancashire Scotland and later on we'll be joined by my colleague Jenny who's a policy and partnerships coordinator. Very briefly, Lancashire Scotland is a charity supported by the Scottish Government. We work to ensure that our land-based agriculture and environmental conservation sector attract and support the skilled new entrants and workers that it needs. So, what is STEM? Science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So why land-based agriculture and environmental conservation careers? Well, the sector offers exciting, challenging, rewarding and excellent career progression opportunities. Primary production, ensuring food is safe, authentic and sustainable. Conservation of landscapes, habitats and species. 33,500 additional workers will be needed by 2028. An average salary for workers in Scotland's salmon industry is £43,000. So to start off with, we have horticulture. Horticulture is growing plants for and maintaining gardens, public parks and green spaces or for sale. Some examples of STEM jobs include a plant breeder or geneticist. So they cross existing plants and select new strains to produce new and improved varieties of plants for cultivation and use. A plant pathologist. Identify and study the life cycles and mode of infection of plant pests and diseases and develop strategies for their control. Soil scientist provides information about the chemistry, biology and physics of the soil to help with everything from landscape to de design to food production and environmental quality. Amenity horticulturist, design, construct, manage and maintain living, recreational and leisure areas such as botanic and public gardens and sports facilities and a plant physiologist. They identify, classify and monitor plant species, understand their growth and how it can be improved. So some examples of how STEM is used in horticulture. We have hydroponics. So hydroponics is the science of growing plants without using soil by feeding them on mineral nutrient salts dissolved in water. This can be used in growing situations where conventional potting with soils is too heavy, inaccessible or bulky. Any plants can be grown hydroponically, but the method is most widely used to produce greenhouse crops, such as cucumbers, peppers and tomatoes. Hydroponic growing methods are being increasingly used in vertical farming practices, where produce is grown in stacked layers, like you can see in the photo. Landscape architecture is the design of outdoor areas to achieve aesthetic, environmental and social outcomes. Projects may include stormwater management, a state of public park landscape design, reducing noise and air pollution in cities using plants and creating green spaces for recreational use. Landscape architects must have a strong knowledge of the environment, be able to use computers to plan new sites and be able to keep detailed accounts on costs of projects. Next we have agriculture and crofting. This is farming land by growing and harvesting crops and rearing animals. Some examples of STEM jobs include an animal nutritionist. They promote a better understanding of the effect of diet on the health, well-being and productivity of animals. Agricultural nutritionists evaluate the chemical and nutritional value of feeds and feed supplements and formulate diets to maximise growth, reproduction, health and performance. An agronomist, they specialise in improving the production of food crops, along with supporting farmers in the control of pests and management of weeds. The agricultural machinery operator, they're involved with a wide range of activities on a farm, from tractor driving to the harvesting of crops, as well as the operation of any other agricultural machinery. This role will include the operation, maintenance and cleaning of combines or other machinery, and sometimes basic repairs. An agriculture consultant works to ensure the farmer's business is running as efficiently as possible. They will usually consult on either technical or business improvements that can be made to the farmer's practices and therefore need to keep up to date with the latest developments and research. 
Here are some examples of technological advancements in agriculture. Firstly, the high-tech tractor. Nowadays, a tremendous amount of technology is used in tractors and is continually being developed. Uses range from auto steer, which helps sow straight lines of seed, soil sampling, which tests the soil pH and nutrient levels, and target spraying of weeds instead of covering a field with a blanket of product. The use of information technology, including satellites, to make the practice of farming more accurate and controlled is often referred to as precision farming. It's not so easy now to go and fix a tractor with a spanner and a box of tools. Next, we have dairy farm robotics. Within the dairy industry, behaviour monitors are increasingly being used. These act like a cow Fitbit, collecting a vast quantity of data about the animal's health and habits. These sensors are most typically worn around the neck and, amongst other things, help monitor the cow's movement, feeding habits and the cow's temperature, which can detect hidden health problems. Aided by sensors, lasers and data collection from the monitors, automated technology is used in the milking process. The cow approaches a milking enclosure with the identification tag being scanned and from this machines know the exact shape of her body and udder, when she was last milked and how much milk was given. If the cow has recently been milked, the gates open and send her back out. If not, a robustic arm with tubes attached to the cow using lasers and then it is milked. Next we have drones. Drones can be used in agriculture to monitor crop growth and help increase crop production. By producing thermal and 3D images of fields, they can provide farmers with information such as analysis of the soil, health of crops, identification of wet and dry areas, and any structural information such as position of drains. Aerial crop spraying using drones is more efficient and quicker than using traditional machinery. Drones are being used in planting, with seed pods being launched from the device directly into the soil. Another example is a cow tail sensor. This attaches to the tail of the cow, as you can see in the photo. It constantly measures a pregnant cow's movement using gesture recognition technology. 24 seven monitoring saves wasted trips back and forth to check the cow. The farmer receives a text message when the cow is ready to give birth because it monitors the contractions of the cow. Next we have land-based engineering. So this is taking care of the machinery used in farming, forestry and gardening. Examples of STEM jobs include land-based service technician. They maintain a range of machinery, plant and equipment used in the agriculture, forestry and horticulture industries. Technicians conduct inspections, perform routine servicing and maintenance and carry out repairs using a wide range of hand and specialist IT diagnostic equipment. Land-based engineer, design, develop and install machinery used in environmental and agricultural industries. The role may also involve working on any issues relating to the function and efficiency of vehicles and equipment. Demonstrator, specialised in products used in agriculture and horticulture, such as tractors, combines, forage harvesters and mowers. Demonstrators will show potential customers what the machinery is capable of doing, including the latest technology such as GPS and electronic mapping. So here are some examples of how STEM is used in land-based engineering. Diagnostic testing. The skills needed to inspect and test land-based machinery and equipment are fundamental for the qualified land-based engineer. These skills need to become more diverse with technological developments of land-based machinery, particularly in relation to electronic and hydraulic systems. A land-based engineer now has to carry out complex test procedures using sophisticated diagnostic equipment. To identify if a fault is being caused by electronic, hydraulic or mechanical components of the system from the data produced. They will then discuss with the customer the best way to proceed to repair the machine. And now we move on to equine. This is anything and everything to do with horses, ponies and donkeys. Examples of STEM jobs in the, in the equestrian industry is an equine nutritionist. They identify supplements and foods to suit a horse's individual lifestyle, breed and age, and to assess the, and analyse the effect of a diet on the horse. A farrier is a highly skilled craft person. They must have knowledge of the physiology and welfare of the horses to fit shoes and provide corrective shoeing following lameness, disease or injury. An equine vet or vet nurse provide diagnosis and treatment to horses, 
improving health and welfare and educate owners on preventative care. And agree, they have a great knowledge of the horse behaviour, handling and husbandry skills. They may have to assess, assist in foaling, wound management and rehabilitation after surgery. So here are some examples of STEM used in the equine industry. Equine nutrition. Correct and balanced nutrition is a critical component of proper horse care. All horses need their six basic nutrient categories to be met. Carbohydrate, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals and water. Although nutritional requirements will vary from horse to horse and depend on their roles, such as if they're a race or riding horse. An equine nutritionist's role is to tailor a horse's diet to their individual requirements. This will include identifying whole foods and different supplements to suit a horse's individual lifestyle, breed and age, to identify health problems, to calculate precise nutritional requirements, create effective diet plans and to assess and analyse the effect of a diet on the horse. And next we have gait analysis. Horse gait are the various ways in which a horse can move, either naturally or as a result of specialised training. Gait analysis can be important in horse care to evaluate any weaknesses in the horse's movement, such as balance or where weight is placed on the hoof, which can then be attributed to prevent injury. There have been many technological developments in equine gait analysis, from capturing the horse's movements on camera to be able to watch it in slow motion, to the latest innovations using sensors and nodes across the horse's body and 3D motion camera equipment. Then on to animal care. So this is maintaining and improving the health and welfare of pet, zoo, farmed and wild animals. Some examples of STEM jobs include a veterinary nurse. They're involved in the hands-on care of animals receiving treatment within a veterinary practice and are skilled in undertake, undertaking a wide range of tests, medical treatments and minor surgical procedures. Vet nurses also play a key role in educating owners on how best to care for their pet. Scottish SPCA inspector, carry out inspections, investigate complaints about the possible ill treatment of animals and deal with calls about trapped or suffering wild animals. A veterinary surgeon, they are responsible for the medical and surgical treatment of a range of animals, including domestic, zoo and farm animals. Vets use their practical skills and knowledge of animal physiology, nutrition and medicine to diagnose illness, prescribe medicines and perform surgery. Zookeeper. They are responsible for the welfare of animals kept in animal attractions, open to the public. Jobs include maintaining and cleaning the animals and their enclosures, food preparation, behavioural observation and providing environmental enrichment for animals in their care. Some examples of the use of STEM in animal care include microchipping. So microchipping a pet gives them the best chance of being identified and returned if they become lost or stolen. Many pets can be microchipped, including cats, dogs, rabbits and horses. Some pets, such as dogs and horses, need to be microchipped by law in the UK. A tiny microchip is quickly and simply inserted under the animal's skin or in the neck of the horse by a device known as an implanter. This gives the pet their own unique 15 digit code. The microchip can be scanned using a held, handheld scanner, which will display the code and you can see that in the photo. This can then be matched to the owner's contact details, which are kept on a database such as the National Pet Log Database. Next, sedating animals. Some diagnostic procedures may be uncomfortable or stressful for animals or require specific positioning, such as for x-rays being taken. In these cases, vets will sedate animals, making them relax and not feel discomfort, but not making them completely unconscious. Working out the amount of sedative needed by the animal is really important. The animals are often small, which can be challenging to work out the dose required, and the age and health status of the animal needs to be considered too. Animals are kept in care until they are fully awake so that the veterinary staff can monitor and ensure there are no complications. So let's find out about aquaculture. Much like agriculture means field growing, aquaculture is the growing in water. It could be sh shellfish cultivation, such as mussels, oysters and scallops. Finfish cultivation, most predominantly in Scotland, it would be salmon, but also trout and other species. 
or aquatic plants such as seaweeds. Seaweeds are still mostly hand harvested, with them being taken from the shoreline, but we're now beginning to see more farmed seaweed, having a potential for growth in this area, as seaweed can be used for feed for humans and animals, cosmetic companies, and in the pharmaceutical industry. So let's look at some jobs in aquaculture. First one is a fish farm technician. They're responsible for jobs such as feeding and grading the fish. This means sorting the fish into similar sizes in the same pen. They clean tanks and pens, maintain nets and equipment, and check on the health of a fish. An aquaculture engineer designs and develops new production facilities, such as tanks and pens, maintain or improve the operations of existing facilities, and make sure all farming operations are functioning correctly. A fish health manager. They support production staff in maintaining high standards of fish health and welfare, they work to present, prevent disease through good water quality management and the nutrition of the fish. And an environmental and sustainability manager. They're responsible for seeing the environmental performance and to sustainably manage fish production. This can include selecting areas for new site development, dealing with fish escapes or managing organic waste. Here are some uses of STEM in the agriculture industry. Aquacultural engineering. This is a construction of the best environment for the cultured species. Engineers work with aquaculture biologists to make the systems more productive and sustainable. This is a recirculating system in this picture, and they're constructed by engineers to provide a higher quality of water. That will promote rapid fish growth. Much of the technology includes equipment to clean and condition the water used in aquaculture before it is put back into the water system. Fish feeding. Farm fish are fed diets especially designed for their nutritional needs. Underfeeding will mean a low level growth in fish, whereas overfeeding can result in water pollution and waste expensive feeds. Feeding can be done by hand, but this is time consuming. Because of this, most companies will use automatic feeding and camera systems. Each fish pen will have a feed dispenser controlled by a computer, as we can see in this picture here. The computer will calculate the meal size and store the data. This is then used to predict what fish will be ready at market size and also make sure that the fish are healthy and eating. Aquaponics. Aquaponics refers to the growing system that combines aquaculture with hydroponics. Excretions from the animals being raised via aquaculture are broken down by bacteria and that's used then to feed the plants and give them the nutrients to grow. This would include plants such as lettuce, spinach and herbs. And here we have a shellfish farm management system. While shellfish agriculture can be less intensive than finfish, there's still many ways of technology being used to support the farming sites. This system here, known as Smart Oyster, can allow farm managers to map where they've put the shellfish using GPS and to also assign tasks to their staff who will receive a notification of the work to be completed that day through a smartphone app. We're now going to hear from Yanis. Yanis is one of our industry champions and he's going to tell us about what his a day in the life of a, a marine operative. He works for the Scottish Salmon Company. Wow, it's, it's wow, the scenery, what I'm seeing every day, it's, it's amazing. Every day, it's something new. When I was a kid, I think that so, life would be a spaceman, a firefighter, but never, never the fish farmer. Too fast, too fast, it's now, it's 90, it's 90, come in please. Last five years was just amazing. It's just because I get so much training, powerboat, radio, firefighting. Sea survival, advanced nighttime ticket. I have both forklift tickets. I can see how many fish I have in the site, how many they're feeding, what size of them. This is a timeline. When I'm finishing, I'm finishing four o'clock feeding. Best I just press feeding and try to watch them. In the morning, I'm taking the water sample, oxygen, salinity, visibility. 
I did modern apprenticeship at aquaculture at Inverness College. I was lucky to win some of the Lanters Awards, like Learner of the Year, Modern Apprenticeship, and Overall Winner. The guys was very well with me, they trained me very well, they were always was welcoming me, and it's it's perfect job. Let's look at game and wildlife management. Gamekeepers and land managers can be crucial to the environment they work in. They can help with conservation of rare and vulnerable species by making sure they're protected and managed in a fair and humane way. They help fight crime and manage conflicts. They protect wildlife for cruel and poor management and are a vital source of information to those visiting rural areas. Let's look at some examples of STEM jobs. So you could be a deer stalker. Stalkers have to maintain a healthy and stable population of deer, carrying out population counts and selecting animals to be culled to result in a balanced number of animals. We'll revisit this when we go into uses of STEM. Could be a gamekeeper. Well, gamekeepers are responsible for the husbandry of both reared and wild game for sporting activities. They're also land managers, helping to shape and conserve wildlife habitats on estates. Game bird farmer. Organised shoots across the UK rely on hand reared birds such as pheasants and partridge to supplement the wild stocks. Game bird farmers ensure game rearing is carried out to a high welfare standard. And here's some examples of when STEM is used in game and wildlife management. We're first going to visit habitat impact assessments. In order to manage deer sustainably, Land managers need to have an understanding of how deer are impacting on habitat over time and how this affects the habitat condition. Habitat impact assessments, or HIAs, are data that's collected by randomly selecting sampling points in a habitat area, making observations on the condition and then returning to these points to monitor changes over time. Managers can then use this information to identify where to focus their efforts to improve the condition of important habitats over an area. And managing deer numbers. It's important to manage deer to ensure a healthy and stable population in balance with the environment, to protect them from starvation and from death and injury in road traffic accidents. It's equally important to prevent deer from causing damage to crops and trees and to protect other creatures from sharing their habitat. In the absence of a natural predator, sustainable management of deer usually means they have to be culled efficiently and humanely by people who understand exactly what they're doing. Land managers need to plan culls around deer health, age, time of year and any welfare issues. That will ensure a strong and healthy herd is left. Now let's look at trees and timber. Forestry plays a big part in locking up carbon in growing trees, helping to reduce gas emissions. At the same time, forests can provide habitats for flora and fauna, supporting biodiversity. More woodlands will also provide us with places to walk and cycle, which helps us stay healthy and connect with nature. Forests also provide a sustainable, renewable and biodegradable product. Wood. Wood can be turned into paper, card or timber for building. Let's have a look at STEM jobs. You could be a forest manager. Forest managers manage designated forest and woodland areas and they'll oversee activities such as timber production, conservation and recreation. As this role covers commercial interests, biodiversity and public access, the role holder needs to balance competing economic and social demands. A forest craft person. They'll typically carry out practical activities on sites, including tree planting, pruning, thinning and felling. They also work on protecting trees by carrying out weeding, pest control and wider forest management tasks such as footpath maintenance. Community forester. They'll work with communities to establish things like tree planting schemes. They'll manage urban woodlands 
and promote the benefits of trees within urban and rural settings by organising events, activities and projects to increase the social involvement and interaction with woodlands. And an arborist, also known as a tree climber or a tree surgeon, they make sure that trees are healthy, safe and protected from damage and disease. They'll carry out surveys and assess trees by climbing with a rope and harness. They'll use power tools to cut off the affected branches and we often find that these roles are based more in urban areas. Now let's look at uses of stem in the trees and timber industry. Harvesters. A key forest management operation is removing trees known as thinning. That will create a better quality timber and open up the tree canopy to encourage greater biodiversity. In the past, thinning was done by hand, which was physically demanding and dangerous. However, this work has now been replaced by machines called harvesters, which have improved safety and will speed up the process. Harvesters are all terrain machines used to fell and strip the tree's branches. They'll cut them into logs in one swift process. One operator is in the vehicle's cab and will control all those functions. A control computer in the cab is simply used to do mechanical movements and record the length and diameter of the trees when they're cut. And this is checking tree health using tomography. Internal decay is a major problem for mature trees. Trees that rot are more likely to snap and fall in heavy winds and bad weather. Foresters can use tomography to see the decay that's happening inside the tree without drilling or damaging the tree itself. Sonic tomography uses sound waves to construct a 2D picture that shows zones of different properties, like in this picture here with the different colours. A dozen or more sensors are placed around a tree trunk and the sensors will transmit and receive impulses. Special software will calculate the measured values and convert them into a colour chart. This can then be used to map and reveal hidden decay, cavities and cracks without cutting into the tree. This can then identify high risk trees for removal. Let's look at fisheries management. Scotland rivers are renowned all over the world for their clean water, natural beauty and the quality of fishing. In particular, salmon fishing on Scotland's rivers has a long history and provides a major source of income for remote rural economies. Fisheries management teams might be doing things like monitoring and managing the habitats, assessing levels and conditions of the fish stocks, or working with the public at an angling or sports fishery. Other key tasks will be carrying out surveys of aquatic life, investigating the fish health and water quality, monitoring the levels of fish and doing technical project work. You might be also advising the members of the public and industry about sustainable fishing and promoting the regulation and protection of freshwater environments. Here's some STEM jobs in fisheries management. Could be a fisheries officer. They monitor, manage and protect wild fish stocks and the rivers, lakes and other habitats where they live. Working with freshwater fish, officers will promote angling as a recreational activity and sometimes police waterways checking for unlawful fishing. A fisheries biologist. They'll collect data on fish and track such things as how many fish are in a particular body of water, how many of them are breeding and at what times, migration patterns between freshwater and out to sea, and whether fish stocks have been impa impacted by environmental factors. And then we've got a hatchery manager. They'll oversee the production of facilities that trap fish give them an environment to reproduce and then release them once they're large enough to survive on their own in lakes or rivers, stocking the water ways for recreational fishing. Here's some uses of STEM in fisheries management. We'll first look at electrofishing. Electrofishing is a common scientific survey used to sample fish populations in rivers to determine their abundance density and what the species are. This device that can be seen in the picture is known as electrofisher. This emits a high voltage charge into the water. When performed correctly, electrofishing results in no permanent harm to the fish. They'll be stunned and return to their natural state in as little as two minutes after being caught. 
If you stun the fish, you're going to put them under less stress when you are looking at them out the water. The scientists will collect the fish, weigh or measure them, uh, maybe re remove a scale for analysis and then return them to the river unscathed. And then we have managing river habitats. The purpose of habitat management is to ensure that adult salmon have the best quality and quantity of spawning areas or rearing habitats. This will hopefully lead to an increase in juvenile fish and conserve stock numbers for the future. Ways of managing river channels include increasing fish cover by adding boulders or plants upstream, managing the bank side and channel vegetation using sprays or cutting, or installing fish ladders around artificial, and ba artificial barriers, like the fish ladder that can be seen in this picture at Pitlockery Dam. Let's take a look at environmental conservation. Environmental conservation is how we describe managing landscapes, the habitats they provide and the species that live in an area. So we're looking at an area as a whole and how the air, water, animal and plant life interact within. This could be rural, coastal, marine or urban areas. As well as giving people access for recreation, it's important to raise awareness and understanding of sustainable land use and management, loss of biodiversity and the effects of climate change. Let's look at examples of STEM jobs. A conservation officer. They protect, manage and enhance the local environment. This can include forests, woodlands, grasslands, mountains and rivers. Part of the role is to encourage people to use the countryside sustainably and to promote awareness and understanding of the natural environment. A ranger. A ranger manages areas of countryside such as woods, common land and national parks. The main focus is on environmental conservation, wildlife management, advice, access, maintenance of pathways and field boundaries and education. Or an ecologist. Ecologists help to protect and restore the natural environment by providing important information about species, habitats and ecosystems and how human activity affects them. Ecologists will conduct field surveys to collect biological information that will help to identify, record and monitor species and their habitats. This will then be used to prepare reports to help inform decision makers such as planners and developers. Here's some examples of STEM use in environmental conservation. Ecological surveying. An ecological survey is carried out to collect biological information about numbers and distributions of plants and or animals in an area. Surveys will be conducted to observe changes over time, possibly due to external factors such as environmental conditions, including pollution, and document any differences due to site management practices. Ecological surveys are conducted using different techniques, depending on the group or species being investigated. This information can then be analysed and presented in a report, which can be used to inform species management plans or where development proposals would have an impact on biodiversity. And then we have National Nature Reserves or NNRs. These were established in Scotland to protect and conserve some of our most important habitats, species and geology and to provide outdoor laboratories for research. NNRs include mountain tops, ancient woodlands, islands with huge colonies of nesting seabirds and lowland locks that are vital staging posts for migrating birds. Most NNRs offer great opportunities for schools, specialist interest groups and the public to experience wildlife firsthand and to learn more about the nature conservation. There are currently 43 NNRs in Scotland, covering almost 1.5% of our Scotland's surface. Now we've got a video. Um, we're going to hear from countryside ranger Luke about his job. So uh, Luke, we're here today in a beautiful setting, beautiful environment, beautiful weather, which is rare for Scotland. Uh, so I've been meaning to ask you, what attracted you to the job as countryside ranger? Just 
growing up in the outdoors really it's it's uh, after i found out about the job uh, and what the job as a ranger entailed it was all seemed outdoors and outdoor places and i was i was all for it so um, I was very fortunate enough to get into it via uh, likes of an apprenticeship and uh, through that over the last three years has been um, living the day in the life of a ranger uh, and studying and learning at the same time. It's been, yeah, fantastic. I know that universities and college isn't for everyone, so what advice would you give to, to school leavers who aren't wanting to go down that route? who would be interested in, in coming into this line of work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, there's a variety of different routes, I suppose, as you'll hear your teachers bickering about, but in our profession, it's um, rangers and people in the profession um, tell other people that are wanting to get into it as volunteering and experience. Um, it's getting that experience of the job first rather than thinking of it as an afterthought to the likes of going to college or university. But um, all rangers are from lots of different backgrounds, which is what's the beautiful thing about the, the profession. Work in a place like this, it's no wonder you love it, but what are, what are the aspects of the job that you're most keen on? It's got to be the people. I just love talking to people, either regulars or people that have never been to the site before. Um, every single day you'll at least have one person that's never vi uh, visited the site and if you can make their day, that's well, thousands of people every year and to think that you're making that difference on someone's visits, uh, something special that uh, I, yeah, no other job does quite the same. So what subjects would be good to take at school if you were interested in going into any of these industries mentioned? English, maths, science, geography, or a qualification known as rural skills. This is avail available at NAT4 level, which is a skills for work rural skills, or a NAT5, an NPA in rural skills. This qualification is a great basis if you would like to go into any of these careers. And what's the best way to get into these industries? These industries have not always been seen as a career destination of choice. People don't consider the sector if they don't have a connection to go through, for example, a family farm. And also we know of historical anecdotal evidence of people saying to, pe to young people, if you don't stick into school and get good grades, you'll end up in that field. These can often be misplaced perceptions of the industry and not understanding of the techniques that are used in modern food production. People will take food for granted. We never have to go into a shop thinking our food might not be safe or that we won't have access to food. Consumers have more understanding now about the environmental cost of shipping food, so they want to buy food more locally produced. Not to mention during the start of the pandemic when we didn't have access to many food types due to freight and fr flight restrictions. There are lots of opportunities in the land based and aquaculture industries. It's not just a job, but a career and an exciting one at that. Practices need to become more efficient, more sustainable. We need to look at reducing costs and also reducing waste. In order to do, do this, we need scientists and engineers to see this through. So ways and pathways of getting into the industries could be volunteering and work experience, especially if you have an interest in conservation roles and working outdoors, but no practical experience to draw on. Volunteering and work experience can give you the background knowledge and experience to draw on, on the future and consolidate sk skills. Making use of the apprenticeship family. This is a great way to progress through training while you're in a job, earning while you learn. There's modern and technical apprenticeships that are available in the land based and aquaculture industries, but also if you're wanting to look at more supporting roles, foundation apprenticeships and graduate apprenticeships are also available. Or you could learn full time. Many training providers are offering distance learning opportunities. The amount of courses are now increasing due to the current restrictions. But you can also go into colleges or universities and learn full time. Here are some examples of a qualifications route you can take. This one being aquaculture. This has just been shown 
to show the modern apprenticeships and technical apprenticeships available in a work-based environment or the school, college or university full-time learning route. The technical apprenticeship in aquaculture management is SCQF level nine, which is the equivalent of a degree. And as mentioned previously, this can be studied while you're in the workplace. So thank you very much for listening to our presentation. If you have any que questions, please feel free to email us at scotland at and we'd be delighted to help you. Thank you very much.